So, how, Ika, have you taken part, have you listened to any of the other talks in the last two days here? Yes, in this? I've, I've been here all day today. Yesterday I was waiting for my mom. Okay. So, uh, one thing that immediately strikes me um, is that in these attempts to bring people from different fields like mathematics and so on and art together is um, that they are generally very unproductive and they are generally failures. And all interdisciplinary artworks are also generally failures. <laughs> and on top of it, another thing that strikes me is that sometimes things happen after. Mm -hmm. For example, when I brought um, Ali Brivanlu together with Pierre Huyck and the Documenta, nothing happened then and there. But the piece of Pierre now, underwater off Sivriada, is the fruit of a collaboration with Ali Brivanlu. So one thing that does happen is simply a certain number of pers personal connections that then become the possibility of sharing knowledges. The other thing that I would like to put in, so I ha that, that's like a question or a, a point. The other point that I wanted to bring up is that often the examples of art that, they so, that the other people bring, like the mathematicians, <clears throat> are from the somehow a very old modernist idea of art. For example, the contrast between Ika's performative event, which is an artwork. It was Hannah's. That's also interesting. The contrast between Hannah's performative event, or inspired by Ika's work on blindness, therefore a blind lecture, has a kind of collapse again of the symbolic order onto the so-called real. I mean, there is a wish to not speak a language that is far and distant from the work that is made as art while in the presentations by so-called scientists there is often a disjuncture between a separation between the way that the speech act is made the modus operandi of the lecture and the thing that is being discussed so Ezra has Barbara Hepworth which is really interesting and Lucio Fontana but what is the way in which one sees those questions, topological questions, through and in and by and via work such as Ika's and Mike's, who are not Lucio Fontana or Barbara Hepworth? So can we see it in a less literal way, you know, like what looks like a whole? So that's a kind of a criticism but it, of Ezra, although I am very, very happy that he tried that attempt. You know, he attempted can that I come act. Up swinging? Can I yes, come you up can come back. Three? And who speaks? First? Go ahead. Okay, you can come so up I was polemic right. on purpose. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I've, I've done, I know a little bit about mathematics. So like uh, the format of like a PowerPoint lecture and a format of like a room full of people who are not mathematicians really kind of uh, castrates them. I mean, mathematics at the highest level is highly experimental, requires time, energy, no pee breaks, and like extreme um, virtuosity and expertise, just like art does. Just because we can demonstrate virtuosity in this place, in front of everybody, because we're using bodies and space and language, and music and, and like uh, instructions. I mean, just by the, they, they can't, rocket here, you know, like it's just uh, the format itself does not lend itself to uh, this virtuosity which is at the, the top of it, you know. Yes, yeah. So, so they can't be, obviously. I'm not, I'm not defending them, I'm just saying it's uh, the format is like the, the kind of um, the, this connection that's trying to be made, um, which Lucy Lippard wrote about is the, at the, in the epilogue, actually, of the six years, where she says, you know, all these interdisciplinary uh, efforts have failed because artists do not have the expertise and scientists do not have the language, uh, except a couple of uh, things, like art and language. She, she was talking about Hans Hake in Bern, like those people kind of made it because they were operating within the social sciences. Uh, I don't think that's up to artists or like mathematicians or up to this like a breaking up of the plane. You know, you take a whole discipline, you break it like Foucault's plane, you know, you break it into the smallest terms and now we all will understand each other because we can understand the words. I think 
what Lucy Lippard was criticizing is the lack of expertise on the art side when one would talk, for example, to a mathematician. So a common language uh, has been trying to be established since the inception of time and when things were much simpler and like with the Greeks and Euclid, when... There was a, a common language. It's, it, it's there was. In the 1700s, there is and no And there was a language. shift in the, after World War II where artists no longer were kind of right on track and inventing, like, you know, the Lumia brothers or, like, uh, uh, photographers, and, like, that they were not uh, technology separated because of the understanding of what technology can do, like with the drop of the bomb. So we have, after this incredible period before World War II, uh, we have uh, abstraction, you know, abstract expressionism in one place and like uh, socialist uh, realism in another place. So like, I don't know, I'm not offending the mathematicians, but I feel like they don't have legs here, you know, or, yeah. So I want to come out swinging. Do it. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> so before World War II, uh, we have uh, abstraction, you know, abstract expressionism in one place and like uh, socialist uh, realism in another place. So like. I don't know. I'm not offending mathematicians, but I feel like they don't have likes here, you know. Or so I want to come out swinging. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think uh, I wanted to give sculptors who were responding to geometry to emphasize the difference between those two. And maybe I misfired, but I think, uh, you know, I. Garbo, you know, then Henry Moore and Barbara Hepworth went and strung strings between lines. Copy. I, he was coming from some sort of constructivism and, mm -hmm. and the Russian Revolution. But uh, look, they were contemplating cycladic sculptures. And in the Biennale, you have this just fantastic room of year color work. And look, if you, so first there are those little stones which actually look a lot like cycladic. The matchsticks? Mm. Yeah. Looks a lot like wood, 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 yeah. And so they don't use marble, that's right. Uh, so somehow there is a link, but also then I was talking to these guys and they were very proud of the fact that uh, they make these cat's cradles in Arnhem Land, which are like knots. And you can see in their bark paintings, they've got all these lines they're drawing. So it's like Naum Gabo, and they apparently have the most complicated cat's cradles. In the, in the whole world. So, you know, there are, I, I've drawn a rather faint link between the sort of art I was talking about and the sort of art you're talking about, I hope. William? Um, so I, I have a comment on the first point that you made, that uh, there's an increasing amount of um, attempts to, to draw links uh, at for example, Chicago, we have an art and science program and, and this sort of thing. And I think what you said is absolutely true in the sense that it's, um, it, uh, it seldom produces any results which you can see I immediately. Um, but I think that's true also within disciplines. I think that's not true, n not a point that's p special yeah. to a collaboration between art and science. I think you know, doing anything that has any content is a highly inefficient process. And the idea that you it's could true. sit Almost down. endeavors are failures. Thank God. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> but also, like, the very, that's, a, that's a great point because, like, when you're in Venice and it's not opening day at the Venice Biennale, the surest way to, like, get a really nice space where there's nobody is to go to the Arsenale. You know, mm -hmm. like, there's, like, a real, like, boundary cut of line. And within even the art field, you have real, which, we're, which is supposed to communicate to a public, you have this real also, just a, I would much, much rather go and see like the, I don't know, like Uffizi or something. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you guys think about the work of Bernard Venet? Do you know this guy? He did like these paintings of, uh, yeah, I hate him. Uh, uh, <laughs> the highway. Uh, he has highway like, art. He has also did the, like the not uh, uh, sculptures, but more notably in the conceptual art movement, he would make paintings of other mathematicians' work without knowing what they mean. Mm -hmm. And then oh, people mm -hmm. would say it's about mathematics, mm -hmm. which was highly offensive to me. So I just thought maybe you could What's talk about What's his name? Bernard, Bernard Venet. Venet. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. They're very pretty. Yes. Yeah. you don't have to. No, okay. uh, <laughs> Tolga, do you have anything to say about what you heard? I saw you were here both days. And 
how you feel about this whole endeavor? Or I mean, uh, I, this is this was a first for me. I mean, just to uh, just to have a chance uh, to meet with an art audience on the things that I'm doing. Uh, I tried to make most of it, uh, but I guess besides my own presentation, I had a lot of fun and I, I heard about really interesting things. And But I, I, I see for myself, I see this as a beginning. Maybe I'll, I'll try to uh, sneak in uh, these kind of events and just to talk about what I am doing. And But but in terms of collaborations, as, as uh, William pointed out, it's in in my own case, I mean, just to have a, for example, the, the, the uh, uh, a deliverable in in my uh, case is a paper, a, a research paper at the end, and for a research paper to come out, even if I'm just working on my own, it takes a lot of time and effort, and usually it's it's just uh, it's just a dead end, and then you turn back and go try something else, and it sometimes it takes years, sometimes it just comes on top of something that you have been thinking about for years and it just take a few days. So you, you never know when you uh, come up with something original, even in, uh, even in your own work with just you're doing alone. And in terms of collaboration, it's, I mean, so many things have to come together at the right time and the right place to have something uh, to put uh, to show. So. I guess we have to define success in these kind of collaborations within fields or between art and science. We we have to be really careful in defining the success. So just to have something meaningful in one area or the other is not the only, um, only thing we can get. I mean, when I when I attend an art art event, I may come up with ideas that I can use in my own field, which has nothing to do with art. So it's just the thought process itself is, is something that we don't know much about in any field. So the, any, any kind of interaction is fruitful in that sense. It doesn't have to lead to whatever you expect at the beginning, I suppose. Um, one, one other very, uh, let's say, obvious thing that occurred in the talks, if you compare them, is that the more you go to the mathematics, the less political it seemed. But is that really true? I mean, that, I would question that. So uh, Ika and Mike, well, Mike was the most extremely directly related to problems of ethnic cleansing and collapse of cultures and crafts in these lands. Direct, very direct, like a denun not a denunciation, but a, um, celebration of the ghosts, so evocation, almost like magic. <coughs> Ikas was very strongly questioning the um, pain, <laughs> the pain and the surface of the thin surface of subjectivity in the so called advanced digital age uh, through also blindness and discussing the over visuality, the consequences of the overflow of the visual images and so forth. So it was very radical politically. Then you get to the oceanographers that touch somehow the water and Emin is rather speaking also about the ecological questions, environmental crises and problems that are political. And then you reach the, William, he's like, Really, it's, it's very hard to see how that somehow impacts in an idea of a form of life that one would find to bring more flourishing of life on the planet or less pain on the planet. So it's already, and then we get to you guys, these topologists, mathematicians, and it seems to completely disappear. Like one doesn't see a relation, and and one is in, but. I wonder if that's true because obviously one from you goes straight to psychoanalysis in the more direct way and then psychoanalysis of course is extremely political in a, in a, in a certain way. So does any one of you have anything to say with this gradation of colors <laughs> from the disinterested to the interested 
and how one chooses to position oneself in society within fields that are closer or more distant from some sort of sense of the interestedness. I, I, I mean, I, I just had one comment. I, I, after you asked that question yesterday at, at dinner, we were sort of discussing what, you know, what, what we thought about it. And, and one thing that came up, I think, amongst several of us, uh, you know, as soon as somebody said it, everybody was like, yeah, that would have been probably something that, that um, might have been interesting as an answer, was um, you sort of asked how much this influences uh, the way you, you know, your political kind of way of thinking. And I think uh, one way in which it influences is to remind you how little we know. And, um, and you know, <laughs> water flows, turbulent flows are everywhere all the time. And we know very, I mean, there, there's some senses in which we do know a lot, but there's other senses in which there's questions which are right in front of us and we really don't know. I mean, f for example, today there was, e even in mathematics, which is you know, a, usually a place of certainty where you sort of, you know, generally if you can talk about something, you, you know a lot about it, um, there is still no classification of, of knots. Um, and people have been working on this since, since Tate. Ah, yeah, maybe I can add to this. I mean, it, um, it is interesting sometimes that, uh, that I certainly and, and many of my colleagues uh, in the sciences are, are happy to get lost, I think, in, in just discovering new things. Uh, and um, and I, I don't feel the need to, uh, to, to link that to, to wider things. Um, if, if you stumble across something and it links, that's great. And yet, uh, my wife is also a scientist, and, and um, it's always troubled her as to whether the work she was doing was was useful to uh, to society and things. And I don't know. It, it's uh, maybe it's just me, but uh, yeah, I, I always found it rather strange in some ways that I I just get lost in the problem and uh, and just discovering new things. It's just not an issue, which is yeah maybe yeah, that's I have a, a, a fallacy. Sure. I'd like to say one thing before him. Uh, just to add to Jeff's remarks, uh, we discussed between ourselves also whether art and science have different uh, approaches. And what we find is that uh, in science, we like to document everything to leave it to the future as much as we know. But he's also right, uh, William is right, that we don't know many things. And the good scientist always says what he doesn't know, okay? So, but we try to document this thing and leave it to the future. And uh, like uh, art or like, like science, also democracy is a bunch of failures. Mm -hmm. And that's normal. Politics is a bunch of failures. That's the only way to learn and to become human, if we ever can. But uh, we have to, I think, document, uh, like you have done in document. <laughs> and I, I know that you are, uh, uh, aiming that and I think uh, the example of for example Fisunonur when you were discussing to throw away this idea was totally foreign to us <laughs> and so we discussed you know whether the aim should be to have something permanent for example this uh, meeting to have all the documentation we have it we have it okay so this this kind of thing is uh, where we can interact and I think the, this interaction of art and science, which you motivate, is very valuable because it is very creative. And we find out yeah. things, and perhaps you find out yeah. things. Yeah, and Mike's turn. Okay. Or, or not. No, no. no. Well, well, he would like to, yeah, I don't know. You know. Oh, well, just to say one thing, I repeat, I don't like to say it's about art and science. I never do because I do not see that boundary. I think it's an old idea of the Enlightenment that doesn't work anymore. Uh, because scientists, science, so-called sciences are very artistic and so-called art is very scientific. And these are words that can serve no purpose in my view right now. Uh, also artists do research and uh, they do a hell of a lot of fine, doc fine, document. And I, I'm not sure that I mean, there's so much around, around this topic, fr around Br Bruno Latour's texts and so on. I, I think that it's a false way to start. 
I mean, in other words, one should not start saying there is something called art and something called science, and how can we bridge it? There's just a bunch of people who have different knowledges and different experiences and different methodologies, and they are put, it's like an experiment. They're just put, so it's very scientific what we're doing here. It's an experiment, no, and we no can do it two or three times, and then it's like verified. But inside <laughs> each group, or let's say in the whole uh, art and science, there can be abstract works, there can be applied works, there can be different kinds of works. Of <laughs> so, course, so exactly. Yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Does Mike want to say something? And well, then I, I think we open to the public and then we go to... Oh, Ezra, after. Oh. Who first? Ezra, do you want to... Yeah, so... Um, I, so you want political. I have to go back to the beginnings of the word geometry, which is measuring the earth and why was where does geometry come from it's the needs of the babylonians to tax fields they had to be able to work out how much and when so they learned astronomy and we're sort of continuing that That's you know horrible. it's maybe but we at least are using it for decoration <laughs> and as we see in all the mosques here in in turkey but I, it is a good idea to remember where these things come from, that everything in mathematics emanates from something useful to someone. Well, useful or about power. Or about power. And but also sometimes art, not always. for that matter. And art, not always power. <laughs> no, but, art yeah. is almost always also in the history yeah. connected to that, as it is today with uh, the situation of... <clears throat> Creative capitalism. Okay, do you have anything to add? Well, I, I, ha I had two things to say, but now I think I have three things to say. Um, I think just on the question of usefulness that you were raising, Jeffrey, and now what I, I think is at the, uh, across the panel, it's, I mean, I, I was very attracted to the examples Ezra gave, you know, and it's not because I'm old fashioned or anything. It's. Um, you know, you mentioned anthropocentrism yesterday, and I love the fact that Henry Moore made sculptures for his sheep. And uh, when, I, when I was uh, communicating in Bamiyan, when I did the workshop for Documenta of stone carving in Bamiyan, that was the example the students were most attracted to because the livestock was in the, their landscape every day of being able to make work for the landscape as opposed to, a, you know, a, pe a pedestal. Um, the other thing about usefulness that I always think about because I, I was trained in architecture and design as well as sculpture uh, is also just about the way that I come down on two sides of things about useful art, you know, as Tanya Bruguera t calls it, or, or the, the, the advocacy that I have for art to remain useless. You know, the, the reversed or the reciprocal ready-made of uh, someone like... Uh, Duchamp, you know, of using uh, Rembrandt as an ironing board or something. Um, this kind of thing I find really, really interesting and also healthily iconoclastic, the same way that I'm fascinated with the melting down of the Barbara Hepworth sculpture uh, for, for its value as metal as opposed to its value on the art market. And the other thing I want to address is just, you know, that the, the, you talk about knots is the, the hangman's noose that was uh, made for me yesterday with the, um, uh, the conversation around uh, the, uh, the Mimar Sinan episode. And um, I want to clarify a point, which is not that I'm interested in claiming one thing or the other, but amid whispers that he was quite possibly Armenian, it was the Turkish nationalist that exhumed his grave in 1935 to measure his skull. I'm not measuring his skull. This is something that happened. It was a violent post-mortem uh, act, and this is the reason it shows up in the story. But I found the tension in the room really telling. Hmm. Anybody would like to? I think this was a fascinating panel, and what intrigued me particularly is that when Ezra was speaking, I was having a terrible anxiety attack because I could see the limits of my own knowledge, and I could see that out there is this vast field of things that I had no idea about. And the same with your talk yesterday. It was like what you said was very 
very true. We see the limits of what we don't know. And I think that's a powerful political statement because we think we know everything or we think we can figure it out. So I think in essence, this, and also I think the term success and failure are out of date anyway. And I think the sense of exploring that we don't know is enormously useful. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe I can uh, add to that. Um, anyone who, who teaches, um, I, I, I fearful to, uh, to use the word science now, but, uh, uh, but, but perhaps in most fields, um, we'll know how quickly what we think we know changes. Um, it's always disappointing when the start of term comes around, as it will do in a couple of weeks, that I have to revisit many of my lectures because what I taught the students last year is now shown to be wrong. And, and, and so, uh, as William mentioned, there's, there's a huge array of, of what we definitely know we don't know, but uh, then uh, a lot of the fields move so quickly that, uh, yeah, if I look back, I've been teaching long enough now and been, been doing research for long enough to, to recognize that my lectures have changed almost beyond recognition. And uh, I'm not that old, so uh, <laughs> assuming I live long enough to retire, I, I would be fascinating to, to compare my first lectures with the ones I end with. <laughs> Tolga, I'd like to say uh, thanks for answering my question, although maybe it wasn't really a question or it was repeated. But um, there is something interesting to me about that in that it, um, the way that you described it and you refused to uh, give it a sort of practical application. Um, as, as the conversation has continued in this panel, it, it seems uh, there was this kind of like utopic thing that was going on there. You know, and I, I suppose um, maybe I asked a question to draw that out. You know, like this idea that uh, rather than actually figuring out a space in which it applies here, you create a space, uh, whether that is like, I mean, that, that's topology, right? It's kind of irreverent to space and geometry in, uh, in a sense, or it's a whole, uh, it's this void. Um, you know, like, the way that you were talking about finding two planes on a uh, on a knot, and I'm I'm gonna kind of butcher this a little bit, but uh, that you were saying that it was it would be impractical or we couldn't really imagine it, and yet you did, you you just did. So um, I thought that was really curious, and actually uh, I feel like that is what despite like these divisions and the arguments about divisions between the disciplines. That's what we're doing anyway. So uh, thank you. <laughs>